Deputy Martin Kenny, you have five minutes. Thank you, Hirlock. Um, the horse racing industry and greyhound industry not only have economic benefits but also bring great enjoyment to hundreds of thousands of people in Ireland every year. I have no wish to restrict the growth or development of these industries, although I have serious doubts about the funds dispersed by government to horse racing Ireland and Board Nagan. Every time this funding is discussed, I hear about thousands of jobs in the industry, but sometimes I wonder about the quality of these jobs, and I wonder if they were counted as whole time equivalents, as they are in the HSE or a school or any other bod state bodies. How many real jobs are there? For, for example, Board Nagan claims there are 10,300 people employed in the greyhound industry. I would love to know where these people work and the basis of the claim that the industry can contributes $500 million to the economy each year. Meanwhile, I am told by dog breeders and trainers that the greyhound industry is in crisis and will disappear within the decade if radical reform does not take place. The horse racing industry, according to Horse Racing Ireland, employs 14,000 people and contributes $1.1 billion to the economy. Now, the question is, with two such healthy and vibrant industries, why has the Exchequer got to hand out such an amount of money? Why does horse racing prize money? which is a sport populated by very rich owners and trainers, have to come from an exchequer which cannot pay for the basic medical needs of our senior citizens, for instance. Of course, we cannot almost ma always make those simple comparisons. But this amount of money, €80 million, Euros, there has to be clear and demonstrable, demonstrable benefits to the society and to our economy. Along with that, there must be strict adherence to corporate governance and transparency in all financial aspects of the industry. The excessive salaries and expenses being drawn down in both organisations is beyond the realm of reason and the decisions of where to spend exchequer money will have to be examined. For example, it was confirmed to me at the Joint Oireachtas Committee that almost €3 million Euros of taxpayers' money will be spent to the redevelopment of Galway Racecourse, mainly on the construction of a champagne bar. There was a time when the people at the Galway Races were happy to drink their champagne in a tent, but now it seems the taxpayer has to pay for the construction of a bar for them. Is this value for money in the context of the economic hardship that so many people are suffering around this country? Horse Racing Ireland has been in the news over the past six months due to the manner of the reappointment of the Chief Executive Officer for the third term. I am led to believe that the irregularities around this appointment of the CEO have continued for over a decade, according to correspondence released by HRI and reported in last Saturday's Irish Times. I have raised this matter before here, and representatives of board of HRI came into the Joint Oireachtas Committee to inform us about this appointment. At that time, the Chairman admitted quite openly that the appointment was against government guidelines, that the CEO's salary had exceeded the government cap, and that the latest appointment was made without even a gesture toward open competition. It was suggested that the board had no option. It has been suggested that the board had no option, as the CEO had accrued rights as a contract of indefinite duration. This state of affairs suggests either extreme incompetence or, more probably, an intentional lapse to provide the CEO with the contract of indefinite duration, allowing this situation to transpire. The Minister for Agriculture and the Minister for Public Expenditure and Reform and the Board of HRI, it seems, feel that this is, was acceptable behaviour. When I raised this matter here in the House to Minister Creed, asking if, considering the blatant disregard for corporate governance displayed by the Board of HRI, he was con he, and would he consider reviewing the amount of money that the Exchequer was providing to it, he referred to my misgivings as a fit of peak. Well, somebody needs to have a fit about it. I still have not got any justification for the way this appointment was allowed, except that it seems that it does not matter because they say that the right man was appointed for the job. I feel that this House must exercise more vigilance regarding the appointments and funds and the way in which they are expended and distributed through these two industries. It would be more appropriate for less exchequer funding to go to prize money for big races and more to other sectors of the industry, like point-to-point -point racing, harness racing and programmes for better breeding and husbandry, incentivising small breeders to improve their stock. It is hard to understand why there is a resistance in the government benches and presumably from Fianna Fáil as well for the increasing of the betting tax so that the industry can be more, more self-funding. Then of course we have the greyhounds. Anyone who would even take a casual look at the way in which the greyhound industry is run would have to be very alarmed. We have had various reports and inquiries such as the Morris report into the doping in the greyhound industry and there was the Indicon report into Board Nagan which found more disregard for corporate governance, people outstaying their terms on the board and even the Joint Oireachtas Committee published a report highlighting serious flaws in the running of the sector. The integrity of the greyhound industry is in tatters, mainly due to the seemingly laissez-faire attitude to the use of performance enhancing drugs. 
The Greyhound Board in Britain warned owners as late as 2014 of the dangers of buying dogs from Ireland and urged all trainers to exercise due caution and diligence in, ass in assessing the drug status regarding the purchase of dogs from Ireland. The use of AI, AI straws from dogs who are more than two years deceased is illegal, yet this rule is continually flouted to the detriment of the quality and renewal of the breeding stock. This is a terrible state of affairs, and it seems as if government seems fit to turn a blind eye and not enforce the necessary discipline and governance on this sector. What is the rationale to the expenditure of this money? I believe that this House deserves more than a shrug from the Minister, and indeed should demand action to reverse this. Board Nagan has failed to do its job. Just one couple of sentences left. Well, has failed to do its job. The recommendation of Morris, Indicon, and indeed the Agricultural Community Committee have not been implemented. And the government tell us that they're preparing new legislation, but there is already legislation there to deal with these regularities, but it has not been I used. Have to get you to conclude, Un Deputy under Kenny. the circumstances, I, under the circumstances, I cannot support the funding of this allocation with these two bodies, and I will be calling a vote on the matter. Thank you. It seems uh, that these two. It seems that these two bodies. Limited, sorry, Deputy. There's a limited period of time and the I, I understand. other deputies. I, I understand it was ten minutes last night and that's why you prepared well, it for You will understand I'm, I'm flying I'm through asking it. you to conclude and I'm calling on, on, on Deputy uh, Willie Penrose. And I will, be call, I will be calling a vote on the matter today because it's outrageous that this money has been spent Deputy in this Penrose. way. Deputy Penrose. Yeah, thank you. Uh, the horse and greyhound sector plays an important role throughout Ireland.